Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 2nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a quick diary from Boyan about TLS on unexpected ports, in this case port 389. Port 389 is usually used for LDAP, but LDAP has an option where you can use start TLS to enable TLS on the fly for an existing connection. Typically that's done for SMTP and quite commonly done for SMTP for LDAP. It's not as common and not as well known that you can actually use that option. Of course, once you enable that option, you have to make sure that TLS is configured correctly. And that's exactly what Boyan was testing here with the Nmap script that he used to verify the TLS configuration. And if you're still daring enough to run WordPress and have the next gen gallery plugin installed, it's time to patch. A SQL injection vulnerability has been made public in this plugin with sufficient detail to exploit it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we already have people going around and scanning for vulnerable implementations. So this vulnerability does not affect all WordPress installs, but only those that have this next gen gallery plugin installed. The German Fraunhofer Institute looked at nine different popular Android password managers and found that all of them are to some extent vulnerable. Now, some of the vulnerabilities are common to many of the applications. For example, insecure storage of master keys. Other vulnerabilities are only affecting some of these applications. One that comes up a couple times and is probably almost more severe is that passwords may be leaked to the wrong subdomain. Now the Fraunhofer Institute did work with the manufacturers of uh, these products and all the flaws outlined in this report have been fixed by now. Again, uh, the investigation only looked at Android password managers. Some of these products are available on different operating systems. Not clear if other operating systems are potentially vulnerable as well. That's of course likely as many of these products are able to exchange data with each other among different operating systems. So likely the encryption of passwords and such is similar. On the other hand, of course, in particular storage of master keys and such, iOS, for example, has some special facilities for that. So maybe on iOS, these programs take advantage of these special facilities. And many browsers have implemented cross-window messaging recently. Now, this has been really useful for instant messengers and Slack, at least the web version of Slack is taking advantage of this feature. One problem with cross-window messaging in JavaScript is that a window can receive messages from any other window and there is no built-in same origin check as we have for so many other JavaScript functions. So it's really up to the recipient to verify that the origin for the particular message is legit. Well, a Slack apparently didn't check that. So it was possible to redirect messages to a malicious site. And with this steal the Slack token from a user. This token is then used for authentication to Slack. So once an attacker gets a hold of the token, the attacker is able to impersonate this user. Aside from uh, the specific application here to Slack, since this is a feature that has become popular recently and you may have used it in a site of your own, this makes a real great case study how to test this feature, whether or not these messages are validated correctly and also how to possibly exploit any weaknesses here. And sticking with web applications here for a final story, the latest Google Captcha, you may have seen it. It usually starts out with a simple checkbox where you have to check that you're not a robot. Now, then if there's a problem with your IP reputation or the way you clicked the 
checkbox you may be presented with an additional challenge. There is now a new script that helps you break that second challenge. And the trick here is pretty quite amazing. First of all, the attacker has to try to force the audio challenge, which is uh, pretty straightforward in order to support uh, people who aren't able to see the images. Google offers an audio challenge as well. And the script then actually takes the audio challenge and uses Google's own voice recognition algorithm in order to break it. Apparently this is working good enough. So they're just using sort of Google against itself and again proving that robots are about as good if not better than humans sometimes in solving these CAPTCHA challenges. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.